Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. This week, I'm going to be getting a so-called perfect makeover based on my features, aka my skin tone, hair color, eye color, and face and body shape. Growing up, I always used to see these articles in teen magazines with titles like how to dress for your body type, or what haircut flatters your face shape, or which lipstick goes with your skin's undertones. And though I would often read them, I never really applied them to my style choices, opting instead for then long hair hair, frosted eyeshadow, and late 2000s mini skirts and Henley shirts, and now what I would call my comfortable vampire aesthetic. Now obviously I don't 100% buy into the idea that you have to wear certain things just based on people's advice on what goes well with your features, but I thought it would be interesting to try and get a head-to-toe makeover based off of these commonly held conceptions. To see one, how different it is from what I usually do, and two, if there's anything I can incorporate to flatter myself more that I also actually like. So with a combination of some research and some help from a couple of experts, hairstylist and YouTuber Brad Mondo and style guru Stacey London, I'm going to be getting a new hairdo, a new outfit, and a new face of makeup all designed to flatter me. Well, specifically my body and also my face. To New York City! We go. So first up is hair. So I'm here in New York City with Brad Mondo. Hi. Who is a hairstylist and a YouTuber. You may know him from such hits as Hairdresser Reacts to America's Next Top Model Makeovers. Who's better? Me or her. But he's also done a couple of videos about like the best haircuts for your face shape and the best hair color for your skin tone. So I figured he'd be the perfect expert to help me on my journey. Yes, I'm so excited to do your hair. This is gonna be amazing, and we're gonna make it perfect for your skin tone, for that face shape, honey. That does mean we're gonna have to say goodbye to the gray hair, but you know, we had like a good month. Uh -huh. I had like a good like five or six weeks with this hair, and I'm, I'm feeling it's good. It's been real. Yeah, it has been real. We're gonna say goodbye today. So first up was the cut, which I wanted to get to suit my face shape. Let's pull this hair off your face. We're gonna accentuate her good parts and diminish the bad parts. There's no bad parts, but the sideburns is what he means. <laughs> From what I can tell, there are six basic face shapes. You can have combinations or variations of them, but these are the six that people usually start from. They are oval, oblong, round, heart-shaped, square, and diamond. To me, you definitely have more of a heart-shaped face because your chin kind of goes inwards to a point, mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of gets wider on the top. So the ideal face shape is an oval for a female because it's symmetrical all the way around. With the same width at the four head and at the chin. Given the fact that I have a heart-shaped face, the idea behind a perfect haircut would be to give the illusion that I'm actually an oval. What I want to do is take your hair up to around the collarbone. Ooh. We're going to add a little bit of layering around her face just to kind of accentuate the jaw more, keep all the weight kind of heavy down here to bring attention down here, and then keep the side part the way it is. Perfect. So before the cutting began, we had to get my hair wet, which was a bit more of a challenge than we anticipated. First, we had a sink malfunction. <laughs> oh! Um, I don't think it works, so. <laughs> and then when we found a usable sink. Can you fit back there? Girl. Oh. It was a pretty tight squeeze for Brad's thighs. <laughs> we can make two. I don't know if it's gonna get hot. It's like it's really. Okay. Oh, it's waking me up. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what I like to feel. There we go. And then we were ready to commence the cut. I love chopping off hair. It's so satisfying. When was the last time you had it short? So the last time I cut my hair was December of 2016. <laughs> I know that you've done a bunch of America's Next Top Model like makeover reactions, but I love when they like cut it off and like hand it to the girl and she's like, nah! <laughs> like I hysterically so crying. Cassandra, why are you crying? I love my hair. I'm not sure that my cut was ANTM level dramatic, but we were actually getting rid of a fair amount of hair. Ooh, Look, yes. It looks so good. I'm gonna shave it after this. Oh. That would be a surprise. But listen, if it suits my face shape, I guess we must. We didn't actually end up doing any shaving that day, but we did end up getting to that long bob length he had described. So we just finished cutting for the most part. We're gonna blow dry it, and then I'm gonna do a little bit more refining. I'm very excited about the length. I feel like a lot lighter. The end 
Ends had been living for a while. Like the Ends are they've been living. Yeah, they've been, been dying. Yeah, they've been dying. <laughs> okay, so what's next? Bronze the color now. The best part, the most fun part, which we based around my skin's undertones, which are the colors that come from underneath your skin to affect its overall hue. These are mostly interpreted as being either warm toned, aka yellow, peach, or golden, or cool toned, aka blue, pink, or red. But there are also a couple of combination wildcard undertones like neutral and olive. And honestly, I've never been able to figure out what exactly my undertones are. I know that in your video where you were like talking about how to figure out your skin tone, you said to like look at the veins on your arm. Yeah. What's that about? So yeah. usually blue is cool and greener veins is um, warmer tones. So looking at my wrists, my veins do seem kind of blue, which would mean that I have cool undertones, but I also see a little bit of green in there or like at least teal. So we decided to rely more on my face than on my wrists. I mean, I definitely see pink in your skin, but I also see warmth. So what I'm gonna say is that your skin is neutral, but more on the cool side. Basically, that means you can pretty much pull off any hair color. Oh no. <laughs> so Brad decided that we should just warm me up a little bit with some lighter brown highlights. You know, just that really pretty, sun-kissed, natural-looking color that'll make you look really healthy and glowy. I'm down for that. <laughs> We're still gonna keep it in the brown family. Not too, too light, but it's definitely gonna be different than what you have now. He started off by bleaching the spots where we wanted the highlights to go. We're painting, girl. We're just doing some... Some Bob Ross. We had to deal with my natural dark hair as well as the old gray dye. So overall, the bleach was definitely the most time consuming step. Brad, what? How would you cut my hair? You no, know, no, I, I like what you have going on. Like, I like, <laughs> no, I. Well, just because if you guys see what Tyler looks like at this very moment. No, I. Brad likes this. So, returning to my hair journey. Hello. We finally finished applying the bleach. Ooh, you are getting the long. And your hair lifted like perfectly. Ooh. Oh, oh, hello. So all we had left to do was to rinse. I never thought I'd be a blonde. And yet here we are. And add some brown back in. We're definitely gonna tone her, make it a lot darker than it is. Um, so it looks natural still. These are the, oh my God. Wow. But unfortunately we were running out of time because the YouTube space closes like right at 9 p.m. What a time crunch girl. Speed scalp massage. <laughs> I'm a fan. Can you just like take a moment to appreciate my stance right now? I'm completely horizontal in like an only moderately sexual way. Makeover video gone sexual. It's more like gone OBGYN. Prenatal stance aside, we were getting close to the birth of my new hairdo. I'm very excited. It's gonna be a change. That's what life's about. Right? Change, evolution, a personal journey <laughs> towards death. And with that done, we had to go. Thank you, YouTube, for letting us film here, but um, we're about to get kicked out. So we're gonna head to Tyler's sister's apartment nearby to finish off the job. I promise, Brad, we're not trying to abduct you. <laughs> All right, we're here, and Brad is just putting a second toner on me just to darken it up like just a little bit more, and then we're gonna go in for the finishing cut. We once again ran into some trouble trying to actually wash my hair, which staying true to form required some contorting and also some ab exercises. My core's working. Then it was time for some final snips and layers, a quick blow dry, a few curls, and an LED panel to just make for a little bit more of a dramatic reveal. I can't see these glasses on. <laughs> but it's fashion. And then it was finally time for me to see my perfect hair. Oh! <laughs> Wow! It's definitely very different from what we started with, but I really like it. I love the length. The length is everything, and I like these little pieces. Oh, it looks really good. No, it doesn't. It just, I just look, I'm, hello. So in the end, the layered long bob that we ended up with brings more weight to around my chin, and it has a little bit of a side-swept bang to take away from my forehead. And the lighter brown highlights have both warm and cool tones to vibe with my neutral complexion. All right, so you would say this definitely fulfills the requirement of a hair makeover that's suited to my features. Honey, 100%. <laughs> Thank you so much, it's Brad. It's such a big change. You killed it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was We fun. both killed it. A weak high five for a strong makeover. So that took care of our perfect haircut. But next up, we needed to find our perfect outfit. So I'm here with style guru Stacy London, who's gonna help me figure this out. Well, we're gonna try. We're gonna try. <laughs> so basically, I'm looking for the 
in quotes, perfect outfit that will flatter my physical attributes the best, you know, sort of like take into account my body shape and my skin tone and like my complexion coloring, that type of stuff. Yes. So Stacy, who's been a stylist for many years and was one of the hosts of the TV show, What Not to Wear, is definitely aware of these types of feature driven clothing rules, but her actual personal guidelines for style are more open-ended. Every item of clothing, every piece of makeup, every way you cut your hair, which looks great by the way, Thank you. has to do one of two things. That's the mm -hmm. criteria. It has to be, have a use value for you in your closet and it should bring you joy. At least one, but ideally both. Great. I don't know if you can read my, my necklace, but it does yes. say being perfect. It does, it's, it's quite nice. But for the purposes of this video, I do just want to be like a set of features, kind of like a glorified mannequin. Okay, so yeah. let's start with the first thing. How do you dress now? I would call my current style comfortable vampire. Like I <laughs> that is one I have not heard. Yeah. So right off the bat, Stacy let me know that she thought my complexion was suited to more color than I usually go for. You have incredibly beautiful skin tone. Okay. You have big eyes and this this color of your hair, all of this lends itself to color. And one thing that people used to do, this is like so 80s, is to tell you like what season you are based on your color. I was hoping you'd bring this up because I have never been able to figure it out. Like that's what because season I am. people aren't seasons. <laughs> seasons are seasons, right? There are a lot of old school metaphors that are used when categorizing one's features. There are the seasons for complexions, which Stacy mentioned, as well as fruits and vegetables used when referring to your body shape. Whenever I try to use these metaphors, I feel like I'm always stuck between autumn and winter for coloring because I have dark hair, but pale skin, and I usually guess pear for body shape since I have small boobs but a decent sized badonk. Okay, I know you don't want to do these things, but yes. would you tell me what season and what fruit I would be that someone else would say? Okay, I would guess that somebody would say that you're in autumn. Okay. Which generally implies that I have warmer skewing coloring with dark hair and brown eyes. And because I can't see your body shape yet, I can't tell you what fruit you would be. You're also not a utensil. So I'm never gonna call you a spoon or a fork or a knife. I don't know what is, which one's that? Listen, I, <laughs> I'm an old dog. I've heard every trick. So in order to truly figure out which fruit or I guess utensil I am, we've got to take this sweatshirt off and put you in something else and take a look at the shape of your body. All right, so I have my tank top on, Stacy. You do, you actually have my tank top on. That's true. <laughs> It's her tank top. So here's the thing. Um, I'm looking at your body and it's pretty straight up and down, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna call you a knife. I'm not gonna call you, I don't even know what's a straight up and down fruit. A rhubarb? A I can't, celery? That's a not a celery, fruit. A celery, that's not a fruit, but still it's in the, um, a banana? It's in the edible area. <laughs> well, you don't curve down at the bottom, so I wouldn't call you a banana either. So from the front, Stacy concluded that I was more of a knife. But once I turned to the side, she got a better view of the rump. You've got a great high ass. Oh, thank you. Okay, so we want to, I mean, these jeans also, just get a look at this. This is what happens when you're young. There's no puckering here. This is, this. These, I miss these days. I gotta be honest with you. Now I'm looking at that and I would say, oh, mm, okay, maybe you're a little bit more that you carry your weight on your bottom half. But what I would definitely say is that your weight is not on your top half. No, right? it's but, not there. But the, I mean, but that's not to say you don't have good boobs, because you do. Oh. One of the things that you have in your favor as Dora mm -hmm. licks your feet is that you have nice broad shoulders. Mm -hmm. So what you may not have in terms of chest size is still very complementary in terms of uh, balancing your bottom half with your top half. But I don't see a defined waist. And mm -hmm. that's the one thing that I would say would most determine the way that I would look at your body, mm -hmm. right? Is that we need to create a waistline for you to have what we call a classic mm -hmm. female form which is hourglass. Now, that doesn't mean you have to have it, but generally speaking, that's the way clothing is cut for women. So much like my haircut was meant to oval eyes my heart-shaped face, Stacy recommended that we find cuts that changed my rhubarb shape into more of an hourglass-shaped fruit or vegetable, like a deformed tomato or something? Or what about a bok choy? It's kind of got like a, a booty and then like some hair on top. That's me. So I went off to find myself some waist defining garments. This is the part of what not to wear where I get to shop by myself, except Stacy doesn't come and help me at the end. Nope. 
<laughs> you can text her though. So now that we've established your shape, we yes. kind of know what we want to be looking for. The easiest, most universal way to create a waist is mm -hmm. to find something like an easy dress, like a fit and flare dress. This is kind of interesting. It definitely has like a little waist cinching action. All right, I'm gonna try this on. I think this is like the right type of garment that Stacy was recommending, but I feel like the fit is just not perfect. Like the waistline is almost too high. The sleeves are a little tight, but I think with color and idea, we're on the right track. In terms of color recommendations overall, Stacy mostly agreed with Brad in that she thought my skin was pretty neutral. You don't have a lot of yellow undertone in your skin. You don't have a lot of blue undertone in your skin. Easily, I can see you in dark purple, in burgundy, in dark green. This is interesting. There's some shine. There's some olive green or muted green. There is a stitch at the waist, I think. Now, I don't think this one fits me quite right either. First off, my bra is just like out. And second off, it doesn't really flare on the bottom. It clings more, which is not ideal. But I do kind of like the color and the beads. It actually ended up being pretty tough to find a fit and flare dress that fit all of our specs. So besides fit and flare dresses, Stacy had also mentioned that we could do like a wide-legged pant. When you do a really skinny jean, as opposed to something a little bit wider, you wind up creating the visual effect that we see this more than we see your whole leg, right? We want something that creates a longer line. So we went on the hunt for a wide-legged pant. Listen, I haven't found it yet, but I smell it. You're like a shopping shark right now. Oh, that's good. As a final note, Stacy wanted to emphasize that things would look different with my new hair, especially color-wise. It's not that your coloring dictates what colors you can wear. Totally. But you are going to find that you pop more in certain neutrals mm -hmm. and pop more in certain colors based on the fact that you have a new hair color. This is true. I have not explored anything really. I've only really come to your house with this new hair color, so. Well, you came to the right place. <laughs> So after exploring a few stores, I found something panty that I thought fit all of the guidelines. All right, so this isn't a dress, but it does have a waist cinching mechanism and it has these pant legs that are the same width all the way down and it's green with a little bit of a pattern. So I'm gonna try it on and uh, see if it could be the one. All right, so this is my green stripey jumpsuit. I don't think I was expecting to like the stripes, but I think I do. And I do like the sort of like muted, but not too dark green color. It is not a dress and it's not really a fit and flare, but the top is definitely fitted. And then the pant legs are like straight down and not tapered at the ends. So it's hitting a lot of good stuff. I'm gonna text a pic of this to Stacy and see what she thinks. All right, so it looks like Stacy likes this jumpsuit and she says wider leg and vertical line print makes you look like a tall glass of water. Love the focus on the waist. So let's get this guy and then get some accessories to finish it off. Stacy also recommended that we pick up some gold jewelry to go with my, she wouldn't call it autumn, but autumn complexion. And she also suggested some flat or wedged sandals. So with the outfit purchased, it was time for the final touch of our perfect makeover the makeup. So for the makeup portion, we decided to use the information we had gathered from Stacy and Brad and combine it with some research to customize a look around my features. I read a lot of articles for this, you guys. I'm prepared. So I think like the first feature we'll be focusing on is the eyes. So I'm gonna do my eyebrows really quick and then we can talk about how we are gonna flatter my eyes with eyeshadow. So there are two elements to consider here. One is my eye shape and the other is my eye color. After looking at a bunch of photos, I've concluded that I have mildly protruding eyes. I deduced this by looking at all of the possible eye shapes listed and then eliminating the other ones, but they also harp on the fact that protruding eyes have a lot of lid space which I do. And the tips to flatter that type of eye shape are basically just like, you can put a lot of stuff on your eyelid. So I could have like a very large amount of eyeliner. I can do some dark eye shadow. I could do a smoky eye. I could just really layer it on thick. Because I think the idea of doing your eye shadow according to your eye shape is to correct whatever shape you have into more of like a neutral almond eye. Besides that, I have dark brown eyes and there are a few different eye shadows colors that complement brown eyes. It seems like either you can go with like bold shocks of color, like cobalt blue or purple, or you could do something a little goldier, like gold, copper, and green. So because the jumpsuit that we have is green, I think I'm gonna stay in the like gold with a bit of greenish gold family 
and hopefully that'll flatter my eyes and my outfit. All right, so since the instructions were basically go ham, I shall go ham. I can't tell if I feel more complimented, but I'm definitely feeling more dramatic. I'm also gonna be using this green color from the Pirates of the Caribbean palette, which we bought for a video and never made. All right, so this is a couple of eyeshadow colors on there, but considering that I have protruding eyes, I shall go in for one more darker color. They said go ham, I'll give them a roast. This is a luau over here. <laughs> so I'm gonna blend this out really quick and then just slap on some foundation and concealer. And then we'll move on to the blush and lipstick, which is very contingent on my skin's undertones. So we'll talk about those. So once again, both Stacy and Brad, when looking at my skin, said that I had overall neutral undertones, but when I went to get a third opinion at Sephora by, you know, getting color IQ'd by their little face scanner, they seemed to think I was neutral but slightly warm. The color that they initially scanned was 2Y07, meaning like two tones of yellow away from medium. But after some swatching and testing, we ended up settling on 1Y07. So we tried a more neutral tone. I think this looks better. One of the tricky things about having a neutral skin tone is that with these makeup advice articles, a lot of them will just tell you you can wear whatever you want. But I think in the spirit of having a slightly lighter hair and Stacy recommending me gold jewelry, I'm gonna continue down that neutral but slightly warm path. So I am gonna bring in some peachy blush. It seems like peachy blushes are both like somewhat universally flattering, but also if you have like warm undertones, you should kind of like stick with warm stuff is what I'm reading. All right, so as we can see, I put a lot of that on. I'm going to just blend this out a little bit more so I can sort of diffuse it and then we'll move on to the lips. Following the trajectory of the color IQ and the blush, we decided to continue down the slightly warm path. Usually for warm undertones, they recommend orange-based lipsticks like terracottas or corals or peaches. So I went for this brick color. Hello there. To finish off the look, I added some pretty thick eyeliner and a dash of dark green eyeshadow on the outer corner lower lash line. All right, so I think that is my full face of makeup based on my features. All in all, I'm pretty into this look. I think that overall, it's not like crazy far off from what I do normally, but I think that there are a couple of things that are different, namely the amount of eyeshadow that's on my eyes and also like any sort of like lower lash situation. So now that my makeup is done, I think it's time to put all three of the pieces of my perfect makeover together and see what I look like. So this is my final head to toe perfect makeover. No longer a rhubarb. Now I am a two radishes on top of each other. There you go. This look definitely includes some elements that I do currently wear, but there are also some things that are more new to me. In particular, the color palette from top to bottom is much warmer than I usually go. I think in general, this is more of just like a summer Sophia look. I used to be a comfortable vampire, now I'm a cinched garden gnome. The shapes, however, I feel like I've at least dabbled in before. I've had my hair this length before, and despite the amount of like long sleeved sweatshirts I wear, I'm not against cinching my waist. Listen, I'll give Stacy that this is like a nice human body shape, but sometimes I like to dress up like a bat. So maybe we'll do half the time hourglass, and you know, the other half of the time, just flying squirrel. In terms of what things from this makeover over, I'll incorporate going forward. I'm not sure if I'll really stick with the warmer color palette, but I could definitely see myself keeping my hair short, putting on some more eyeshadow when I get the chance, and also embracing wide-legged pants. You look very comfortable. I am very comfortable. Regardless of body shape. <laughs> That's one thing about wide leg pants. They feel a little bit more like pajamas than skinny pants. You're so damn lucky. <laughs> you wear gym shorts every day. What? So all in all, in terms of this being my perfect makeover, I do think that it complements my physical features and gets them a bit closer to being ideal. And it was a fun experiment overall. There's obviously the question of why these ideals or rules even exist. And I think to touch on it briefly, they're related to instinctual preferences based on perceived fertility, geometry, and also just like societal constructs. But I think that's all a bit much to unpack in this video. 
now. So for now, I think we can just take them at face value and see them as more of a jumping off point for style or color recommendations and not the end all be all of what you should wear or even what not to wear. Right, Stacy? Thank you guys so much for watching, and a big thank you to Brad and Stacy for participating in this video. Also, if you guys want to see more of this makeover process, yes, it was a wild one. <laughs> head over to Brad's channel because he's taking some of this footage and making a new video I'm out of it. Do it. It's, we got a lot of footage, girl. It's been hours. If you liked that video, make sure to smash that like button, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button. A big shout out to Megan for watching. Thanks for watching, Megan, and I will see you guys a next time.